Today, in Timothy in Japan, we return to Nakano Broadway, Tokyo's second home for anime. Last time out, we went manga shopping, and <laughs> here's my plug, plug, plug. Make sure to go and watch that video. But today, we complete the Nakano Broadway trilogy. We're going to see what else Nakano Broadway has to offer. But before we get started, if you are enjoying these Japan videos, please, please, please make sure to click that subscribe button. I'm also on Twitter, at UK. Right, let's see what else Nakano Broadway has to offer. Now this is one thing you're going to see plenty of in Nakano Broadway. Anime figurines. But if you see a figurine you like, I do recommend shopping around the whole place because trust me, a lot of these places have a lot of the same stock and they do have it for different prices. This shop has a lot of older stock. Look at those really cool looking Devilman figures. Don't see them every day. Hey look, it's the Night Wonder of the World, Mount Lovelight. Hey look, really old UFO plushes. These probably would have been in claw machines like in the 90s. They've got Doramon, one of the characters for Luke in the third. And yeah, I have no idea where that pig came from. Funny, back in the 90s and early 2000s back in the UK, the early sort of anime cons actually had a lot of these sort of stuff for sale as I believe this is one of the cheaper things people could actually get their hands on. Uh, I wasn't there, really there for this sort of time, but you still actually can find these sort of premium buys and stuff. Hey look, Hololive price figures. Don't worry, I'm actually doing a whole video where I show you all the merchandise I could find for Hololive, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hey look, a penguin drum figure. I actually picked this up in my last Japan trip, that was like seven years ago. <laughs> So yeah, it's actually gone up in price. I remember only picking it up for something ridiculous like 500 yen. Well, I guess now it's an antique. Time to look at the plushes. Nice, they got the new Lum plush. No joke, this had literally just come out in the arcades when I got to Japan and I practically could not find it in any other shop. So yeah, I picked it up here and I'm really happy I did because I don't think I saw it again. Even in the arcades, that like, literally they were supposed to be essentially in the price machines. I think I only saw it about once or twice, so yeah. Good pick up there. And here on display is all the stuff you normally can get in the Gachapon machines. In shops like this, essentially you can buy them individually and you can choose the characters you want. They're normally a little bit more expensive, but hey, if you're going for the exact character, this is probably the best way to go. All hail round your. I actually really regret not picking up this little plush keychain. Man, this place feels like a labyrinth of anime merchandise. I wonder if I can get out. In Japan, by law, if you are an anime shop, you must have a One Piece section. If you don't, you get your anime shop license taken away. Wait, I'm back at the Spy Family stuff. Wait, this is some anime merchandise lab room. I'm stuck forever! <laughs> Don't worry people, I got better, but you may not be as lucky. Now on to the video game figures. Hey, check out this Famicom alarm clock, and it comes with a little ice climber game to change it into. My friend Luke would really like this, he's really into ice climbers. In Japan, there's one RPG series that's king. No, not Final Fantasy, Dragon Quest. Yeah, literally, Japan is crazy about Dragon Quest. And another thing Japan is crazy about is Disney and Disneyland, which we actually will be visiting very, very soon. So make sure to subscribe, plug, plug, plug. Wow, a whole sea of Duffy plushes. Funny, I actually picked one of these up for like 10 euros at Disneyland Paris and they literally were like, please take these off our hands, we don't want these anymore. Hey look, a random arcade. Seems to only really have fighting games in it though. But that's what I like about Nakano Broadway, you can just find really random things like this. Like this random office, someone really went to town on this. Wait a second, that's a Simpsons reference. Wow, this shop seems to sell really old anime art books and anime guides from the 80s and 90s. They seem to like having a lot of LUM art books in this shop. Don't worry, this bag alone is my LUM fix for the day. The next shop we found sold old anime sales. 
Wow, they even got frames from the anime Sizzle Sam. This show has been going since 1969 and has over 2,000 episodes. That's right, this show has been running 20 more years than The Simpsons has and is still going strong, unlike The Simpsons. Wow, they even got the original line sketches. Okay, this Oh My Goddess frame is absolutely gorgeous. Kind of wish I did buy it, but it was very expensive. Wow, this place seems to have a lot of anime goodness. Wow, they even got signed scripts. Wow, this is a really rare find here. This is a photo of original character designs from the abandoned Pippi Longstocking anime. It was going to be made by Miyazaki himself, but unfortunately they could not they could not quite work out the rights. It's not just anime and manga related stuff in Nakano Broadway. You think of a hobby, there's probably a shop for it in Nakano Broadway. This place sells cars. And Thomas the Tank Engine for some reason. There's actually a lot of uh, American pop culture stuff in Nakano Broadway. I kinda wish I filmed a lot more of it. I did find this place that had a load of Garfields. I kept it in because I know Rebecca would probably enjoy it. Right, now time for one of the main reasons I came to Nakano Broadway. I recently got into vintage Pokemon cards and one of the YouTubers I like to watch is Max Mofo and he actually came and visited this Mandarake inside Nakano Broadway. In his video, the place is absolutely filled with vintage cards at really good prices. And he even picked up some really, really cool bulk cubes that I really did actually want to pick up. And here it is, the Mandarake card shop in Nakano Broadway. Wow, it feels like they made a trading card game for practically every anime ever made. At last, the legendary Pokemon section. Some nice base set stuff, but not as much as they used to have. Yes, I do understand the demand for vintage Pokemon cards have gone up in the last few years. And I also believe Unlisted Leafy also did a video in here. And yes, there are actually some more cards in the folders. I didn't actually film in there because it was really hard to look through because there were lots of people trying to look through the folders. If you want to go card shopping at Mandarake, I recommend going to one of the offbeat Mandarakes. For example, I went to a Mandarake more in Central Osaka and literally there the vintage Pokemon cards were, there were folders for full of them. Unlike here where literally you go through the folders, there'll just be loads of empty spaces where people have taken cards. Um, there was way more like on display, and yeah, literally, I think I was like the only person in the entire section. So yeah, um, if you want to go Pokemon card shopping, I would say Mandarake outside of Tokyo. And the other really good place is Hobby Off. I'm hopefully doing a video from, on that at some point. So um, yeah, another plug, plug, plug to subscribe. So, is Nakano Broadway a must visit? And does it really stand up to Akihabara anime and manga merchandise wise? I will say Akihabara is actually a lot more bigger and does have a lot more shops. Still, I did find Nakano Broadway to actually have little bits and bobs that you couldn't even find in Akihabara. And I also do feel Nakano Broadway does actually have a bigger variety of hobby shops, not to do with anime and manga. The people I would probably most strongly recommend Nakano Broadway to is actually collectors of more American toys and member of I definitely will say Nakano Broadway is definitely worth a trip if you are into anime, manga or I guess collectibles or other hobby stuff. 